Recently, John Davis had a video where he talked about a number of things, some of which are a bit controversial if you lead an extremely boring life. A couple of the points uh, that he made was he sort of classified knives between knives that are functional users and knives that are pocket jewelry. And he gave an example of a knife very similar to this one, which is from Zero Tolerance, 0561. And I was getting ready to do a slight commentary on a large fixed blade, and it struck me as to how much of my commentary was going to be very similar to what John had just made, but talking about fixed blades rather than folders, and talking about something I call design by picture rather than design by purpose. This is a knife that's clearly designed by picture, meaning that somebody has a picture in their mind of how the knife is supposed to look, and the entire purpose of the knife is built around selling based on that picture. This knife isn't functional. It's not a tool, and it has a number of extremely severe drawbacks and inconsistencies with the design. This is the same thing. This is an example by Falkniven. Again, of a knife that's designed by pitcher. It looks very nice to many people, I would assume. But when you try to use it, you find that the very thick wedge shape primary grind and very high edge angle and edge thickness has very low cutting ability. But yet if you try to use it for heavy type work, you have a very slick handle, an almost non-functional guard, and a very high carbide stainless steel. So what exactly is it supposed to do, performance-wise? This is an example of a knife that, while it looks very nice, is actually designed to actually perform as a knife. It has a relatively high performance primary grind, very nice thin edge, high performance cutting geometry. The handle is all nicely radiused, very secure in hand. The front flipper serves as a very prominent guard. And it's capable of doing a fair share of work beyond light cutting. I've hammered with the butt of it to get loose some scaled concrete, dug around with the point of the tip, cut glass tubes with the blade, not just a light paper cutter. Which was the other point John sort of made, is that knives that do have the capability to be used in such a manner are more useful. And of course he got the usual, well, you know, proper tool for the proper job type thing. And why are you using knives for that type of thing? They're only made for light cutting. If you buy a knife like this, or like this, XM18 from Rick Hinderer, and all you're doing is using it for light cutting, you're using the wrong tool for the job. This is not a knife made for light cutting. You don't put that thickness of blade in it. You definitely don't put that type of primary grind on it. You don't put that edge thickness and that edge angle on a knife for light cutting. This is what a knife looks like if you make it for light cutting. It has a disposable scalpel blade on it. And when you start stepping it up, into other knives like this, the Duke Duke. The reason that you're choosing the heavier blade steel is to actually give it some stiffness so that you can do light prying with it and you're not concerned about snapping off the blade. But still, very high performance primary grind, very thin edge, very low edge angle. 
Now that brings me to the knife that I really wanted to talk about, which is this thing. This is the Condor Village Parang. And it's an example of knife by design by pitcher. It looks nice. And if you've never used the Village Parang, it might actually look similar to a pitcher of one but functionally it bears little in common. To start off with, you generally don't see a lot of these types of sheets because they're very difficult to get the knife in and out of. Easy, fluidly. You don't want a knife when you're actually working with it that it's anything but instant to just take it out and put it back in the case. Which is why parangs usually have drop-in cases where the blades just slide in and out relatively easily. As a bit about quality of manufacturing, see the rivets? Face popped off this one right here, and it's already starting to compact. Why? Again, designed by pitcher. See how thick the leather is up here? See how it basically goes down to the same thickness down here? That's because they skinned it right out. This glue gave away almost immediately. If you're left with less than, you are probably about a 30 second inch thick of leather down there. Once that glue gave way it started buckling of course like that and that popped off the face of that rivet which is now starting to compress in around that and will relatively shortly come apart. Moving on to the blade itself, again looks like picture of a village parang. And it reminded me when I went to India and some of the chefs over there would try to cook Western food but of course they've never tasted it, had no idea how it should be prepared. Some of them now, not all of them. So you would get a hamburger which would have cabbage on it instead of lettuce which is awesome by the way. I highly suggest you try that. But of course that's again designed by a pitcher. That looks like a hamburger. Doesn't taste like it. it. Looks like a village parang. Doesn't act like it. Some of these things, I don't know if they're intentionally deceptive or just design incompetence. Who knows? See how high this polish line goes on the blade? That looks like it has a relatively high primary grind. It actually doesn't. The grind only starts way down here almost near to the edge where it goes to a very steep more than 20 degree per side bevel. This up here is nothing, just the flats are polished. The handle looks like it has a decent shape however it's just as thick as it is wide so this is almost round so it very easily turns in hand. It has that large bulb swell on the end but it's very difficult to actually grip down next to it because the handle is tapered to make you grip up around the front of it. So all that does is sort of slop you when you slide back. It's not actually made to grip down in that area. So what you end up with, this is a relatively heavy blade. This has the chopping ability of something like this. It's slightly a bit more on uh, larger, softer wood. This is an MT-151. The amusing thing about this, the part that I found really funny, is when they decided to copy the Trailmaster, they even copied the faults that are in the handle. Uh, the Craytown wears down relatively fast when you're chopping, not when you're cutting. It's a nice grip for hunters and stuff like that, but when you're chopping, those impacts move your hand on the handle, so it gets relatively slick and you can very quickly start to be able to turn the actual grip material around and it gets a bit shaky and flimsy when you're feeling it and it's just held down by this lanyard too. So the Condor Village Parang chops about as well as that but it's twice as heavy which means you're doing twice as much work to achieve the same result. That's on heavy chopping so I'm talking about sticks say between two to six inches thick. 
in regards to splitting, does nice. Relatively thick profile, doesn't bind very well into wood, has a nice broad spot up here uh, for strike impacts, doesn't get a lot of vibration uh, down to the handle. Very thick blade, so you're not concerned about it uh, twisting in the wood. So as a fro, very nice. On light vegetation, uh, forget about it. This is again very heavy, slow moving. It tends to push light vegetation out of the way. In fact, when I was using that, I asked myself the question on light vegetation, clearing brush and such, would I actually prefer that over this? This is the Ergoslice Bushcraft from Bruce Rugg. It's the exact opposite of what I call design by pitcher. Every aspect of this Bruce has spent considerable time in developing it from a performance point of view. Even the way that he has contoured or shaped the top of the handle right here and arced it so that when you grip forward your thumb fits right around the top of the handle scale like this so you can position your hand forward as far as possible to reduce leverage disadvantage when you're doing power cuts. Very nice knife. And I came to the conclusion I'd actually prefer this knife if I was doing a significant amount of light vegetation cutting. Because I can actually take this and just cut the vegetation by a push or a slice with less effort and far faster than I can chop it with the village parang. In regards to carving, uh, forget about it. It's a small percentage of a decent knife. I normally compare them to uh, standard Mora and some people might get a bit excited about doing that because hey it shouldn't cut as well as Amora. That's nonsensical. Amora cuts as well as it does because the angle of the edge is 10 degrees per side. Any knife that has an angle of 10 degrees per side or less and has a primary grind will outcut Amora. This one easily will on light woods. But the Condor Village Parang is floating between around 15 or 25 percent in terms of carving. It does a little better relatively um, on lighter use when you're only putting about 10 or 20 pounds into it but when you start to press relatively heavy it's also kind of awkward to use this for uh, heavy carving. It falls far behind. This isn't an indictment of the design of the Parang. It's just this particular implantation of this. It has a decent steel. It's a plain carbon steel with a decent choice for hardening to put it on the size of ease of maintenance rather than ultimate performance in terms of sharpness, edge holding and the ability to take and hold a very fine edge. But again, nice performance. During some of the rougher brush cutting cut through some of the limbs slammed into the ground hit some rocks, the edge just deformed, pushed to the side. You can take a light hammer, hammer them dense back, sharpen the blade. Works very nice, even on soft, natural stones. Very easy to maintain. Rusts, of course, almost immediately, as you would expect any plain carbon steel to do. Back to the design itself. There is a parang hidden in this, an actual real village parang. Not 100% sure if I'll actually dig it out. What I would have to do is take these handle scales off, taper the tang, ideally anneal it. That takes a lot of weight out of the tang, shifts the balance point forward, and the annealing dampens out any excess vibrations from less than ideal hits. Then taper the primary grind much, much higher, slim out the edge, reduce the angle. Get it down to around, say, a 6 to 8 degree bevel approaching the edge. And then around, say, 25 thou, uh, thicken that up a bit to around 10 to 15 degrees per side. Take a little bit of experimentation, but that's about what the bevel is. And bring it all the way up. There's no reason to have a saber grind on a parang. And then completely round off the spine. You want the spine round for actually doing hand holes, for doing palm strikes. This one is relatively square. Uh, you might want to leave a little bit relatively square 
because those sharp edges can be useful for breaking up coconuts, uh, cutting in terms of smashing through relatively dry wood where you don't want to uh, waste the edge against it because the really really dry wood can split and shatter and it torques around the edge. Uh, so a nice square spot up there will actually of course allow you to crack that off because that square edge can smash into the wood and sort of make an effective uh, cutting surface. A square edge can also be useful for some types of uh, scraping and it will also give you a visual point sort of in terms of uh, impact. Not 100% sure if I will do this but there definitely is potential to do it because the steel seem uh, solid. In regards to a general opinion uh, on this knife uh, there is a, a review from um, a gentleman from Equip to Endure He's extremely glowingly positive. Um, I wouldn't agree with him on a lot of what he says, but one of the biggest problems in uh, the industry when you're talking about performance reviews is people rarely say what they're comparing it to. So when someone says, wow, that chop's really good. Well, what does chop's okay mean to you? What does chop's bad mean to you? I mean, does it take you 40 hits to go through a normal 2x4? Is that chop's really good? The one thing I would uh, agree with, and I'll give a link to his review in the description, he constantly refers to this as a beater. And he talks about hammering with it and hammering on it and that type of thing. From that perspective, this makes a relatively decent hammer. It's quite heavy. With the spine and even with the flats of the blade, be careful because the handle would round. Um, that's the other thing that I would need to modify. You need to slim out this handle and turn it into more of an oval uh, cross section because as it is right now it's quite dangerous when you're chopping because any less than ideal hit and the blade will roll in your hand <laughs> see how easy it is to turn because again this is 100% round it doesn't have that nice uh, cross section that you want where this dimension is significantly more than this dimension and that will stabilize it uh, in hand But from the point of view of durability, and some people take that approach, well, you know, he's just a novice, he's just getting into working in the outdoors, give him a tool which is more suitable for, uh, as they say, brute force and ignorance. I don't really agree with that approach, because that style of use is extremely dangerous, it's very limiting, and kind of degrading to the person when you're giving him a tool and saying, hey, buddy, you obviously don't know very much about woodworking and you look fairly stunned so you're probably never going to learn very much about woodworking so while this is not much of a knife it's a pretty decent hammer and that's probably how you're ever going to be capable of using probably not this is not that complicated most people can learn how to cut a piece of wood effectively chop a piece of wood effectively and split a piece of wood effectively by taking advantage of the knots and the grain formation in the wood it's not rocket science and I would know I'm a rocket scientist. As a kit knife, as a project knife, kind of interesting. As a functional tool, this is definitely designed by pitcher.